Okay. An unusual subject this morning, but it goes a little deeper than that. The simple question, was Job a doctor? And my, the purpose of this message is to point out there's some truths and there's some untruths. Sometimes people don't read their Bible. I'm, fr I'm afraid that that's the case in most cases. People don't study the Word of God. I saw this week where, uh, on the Internet where a guy said he believed certain thing about uh, to the church and the Lord's work. And I'm convinced you have to have a reason to believe something. If the Lord said it, it's truth. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I hope you can grasp what I'm trying to get across to you. But let's read the first verse on your page there. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. A little four-year-old girl was riding home from church one day, and she asked her parents this question that I've made our subject. Was Job a doctor? Her mother responded to her, Well, I don't think so, but why do you ask? Because of what the preacher said today, this morning, in this verse I just read. You have heard of the patience of Job. Think about it a moment. Understand little girl. Give her credit. She was listening, wasn't she? To be absolutely correct, what she was thinking of P-A-T-I-E-N-T-S. The different patience, right? But that's how some people hear the Bible. We have a, a person that a real sweet person in the church, their name's on our roll, and they don't go here now, they've moved away. But on Facebook, a few days ago, they put on there, she put on there how much she loved her daddy. And he's gone on to be with the Lord some years ago, some 26, 27 years ago. And said he just loved that song, Father alone father alone left the R out father alone instead of father alone a lot of people I've known sing that song <laughs> father alone on father's day <laughs> and I tried to correct it I just put the, that father should be Father, F-A-R-T-H-E-R. -E and I think I didn't intend to, but it, I was trying to help them so they wouldn't make that, continue to make that mistake. But this little girl earnestly wanted to know if Job was a doctor. Many who go to church never absorb that much. I had a fellow, a uh, black fellow tell me several years ago, said, when I was working in a foundry, back it a long time ago, and he said to me, hey, Rev, said, boy, we had a great day in church yesterday. This fellow's name was Walter. I said, well, Walter, I said, uh, uh, who all got saved? Oh, nobody got saved, but they got happy. What did he get happy about? Oh, says, Sister so and so sang us a song that just carried us away. Well, that's great, isn't it? There's got to be some truth in there. 
someone has on Facebook this morning and yesterday about it's not how close the church is to your house. It's how close it is to the truth. Amen. And folk, there's a vast difference. But many people, again, I'll be repetitious, who go to church never absorb the truth. Some hear God's word and they take one verse of scripture and they pretend to know the Bible. One of my relatives said to me, and I'll just be precise, my dad's with the Lord now so I can tell you who it was. My dad said to me, he said, uh, somebody wanted to sell us a dog and my dad said, you can't sell a dog. You can't, you're not supposed to buy or sell one. I said, Dad, where you get that at? He says it's in the Bible. Y'all listen close to this. This is a fact of life. I tell you, I've heard my dad say it over and over. Look at your paper. Look at your paper. Deuteronomy 23. There shall be no whore of the daughter of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. By the way, lest I leave it here, and I'm going to come back to this next verse in a moment. But the Methodist Church is meeting this week to decide whether to ordain homos, sodomites, into the ministry. In their conference, and I was reading what some of the ministers were having to say about it, and some of them said the church, some of the churches were going to leave the denomination if they go ahead and approve it, which they said is apt to do. But they said we accept them openly. <coughs> now, folks, what, what did the Bible say? Just read that verse again before we go on. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. That means you're disallowed. You know what God told them to do in Israel with the Sodomites? Somebody won't tell me? Stone. To stone them. Because they didn't want them to corrupt the rest of the people. But it's a daily, you pick up a newspaper and it's not a day that you can pick up a paper they're not hollering for more rights. Well, I tell you what God said and folks God's got the final word. Amen. But then we get down to this uh, main verse, verse 18, that I wanted to focus on. I shall not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. My daddy said, see, it says right here, you're not supposed to bring the price of a dog into your house. I said, daddy, what kind of dog is he talking about? He said, bow wow, bow wow. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> so there row four, let's clarify that. Look down to Revelation 22, verse 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are what? Dogs and drug pushers, sorcerers, that's what it means, and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whoso loveth and maketh a lie. That dog was a particular kind of people. And the Lord said it's not right that the master of the house should take the children's bed, a bread, and feed it to the dogs. If you were an unbeliever in those days, you were among those called dogs. Two-legged, not four-legged. 
that's the reference when you find the word dogs used in the, the scripture, that's what mainly it had reference to. Now you know, if you hear somebody pull that verse on you, tell them to read the rest of the Bible. But then uh, another place says you have your houses to eat in. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 22. What have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God? And shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. The church at Corinth was having some problems with the Lord's Supper. They were abusing it. And Paul said, you be careful because some of you are already dead over this and some of you are sick because you're doing the Lord's Supper in the wrong manner. And the fellow that uh, used to attend church here, sometimes back, almost always here on Sunday morning, had gone down to a church that has a woman pastor He never joined there, but he takes the Lord's Supper. And he responded on a Facebook here this past week he, because the Bible teaches close communion. That means if you're going to take the Lord's Supper, it should be with a body of which you are a member. And we're likened to a body. If the toe hurts, the rest of the body hurts. But if you're a member of this church, that's who you should take the Lord's Supper with. And this guy says on the Facebook, well, I believe so. Why do you believe that? You are part of this body if you're a member of this church. And the Bible teaches that you have to govern that way. The church at Corinth had some other problems. It was a young guy that was having a, a, an affair with his stepmother. And Paul told him to get that guy, get the leaven out, take it out. Remove it from you. Because a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Now, if a person's not a member, how can you remove them from your membership? Tell me. If they're not a member, how can you remove them from you? We're part of a body. And each church individually is as a body. We don't go down to Clay Road church, Baptist Church down the road down here and tell them what they got to do and can't do. Because that's their business. It, they're going to have to answer the Lord as a church for what they do or don't do. The same thing's true here, folks. We're responsible for not the, what the world says about Christianity, but we're responsible for to the Lord for what we do or don't do. But let that sink in. If we re believe something, we've got to have a scriptural reason for believing it. It's not a hit and miss deal. The Lord gives us His Word and we have to go by that. And I tell you what, He hadn't been proven wrong yet. And I tell you further that, He never will be because He is truth Himself. But then another scripture comes to mind that is obvious to us. Revelation 7 verse 1. If you will, right in the middle of the page. Revelation 7 verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any on any tree. Four corners of the earth. I thought the earth was round. But this is, you know, you go over to a certain place and you drop off. 
We look down at the next verse, Isaiah 40, verse 22. It is he, our God, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. So obviously, <laughs> the earth is not square. It meant the north, south, east, and the west. Another thing that I heard over the years, especially when I was young, Younger, y'all may have heard people say this before, but if if you hear them say it, correct them. In the last days, the Bible says you won't or can't tell one season from another. Heard anybody say that? Now, what the Bible says. I remember, if y'all forgive a pardon or a personal illustration, my brother was going to be a preacher as a young guy. And he was five years older than me, and that's a big difference in boys. And one day, him and his buddy got off down, and I was with them, and they got to preaching one to another. You know, the Lord's coming back, and they were showing some plants out. They said, man, they, they're not supposed to be blooming this time of the year. I was probably about six, seven years old, and they were preaching to me. And they had me believing the Lord was going to come before we got home. I wanted to go see my mama. Because of these, my buddy, brother and his buddy, tell him that you don't know one season from another. Man, I swallowed my heart. And I got to go get home and see my mama. I was a mama's boy, by the way. But what I'm saying to you is this is people teach that for truth. But look at Genesis 8, verse 22. While the earth remaineth, Seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. So what people say and what the Bible says often contrary one to the other. And then uh, people talk about long hair on boys, and I've never been one for a, a boy to wear long hair, but that's their business. It's their business, and I'm going to, but listen, if you come around my dad, he didn't go to your back and talk about you. He talked to your face. My son and one of his buddies came over one day. My dad was down visiting with us here. My buddy, uh, my son and his buddy walked in the door, and uh, uh, Daddy, I want you to meet, uh, and I called the fellow's name, and this is Vernon's buddy. Daddy stopped and he said, look at that long hair you got, boy. First thing he said to him. He didn't go behind his back. He said, boy, your hair's too long. Well, I'm not, I, I think a man ought to look like a man and a woman ought to look like a woman. Amen. But let's read the scripture. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 14 and 16. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Now, as a, as a question mark, you notice at the end of that, it's not a period, it's, it's a question. But if a woman have long hair, it's a glory to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, about the long hair especially, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. People try to paint a picture of our Lord, and folk, no artist has ever captured what our Lord looked like. Number one, they haven't seen him. But they always paint him for some reason or other with long hair. You notice that? Well, I, I'm convinced the Lord didn't have long hair. Because this right here said, Nature itself testified to shame for a man to wear long hair.
but we have no such custom. We have no such, thank the Lord, we're not under the law, are we? But let's read, people still want to go back to the law. And the Lord taught, we won't take time to turn there, but in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, that uh, a lady should not wear that which pertaineth to a man, and vice versa. And man should not wear that which, but that was under the law of Israel. We're not under the law. Uh, so don't fear that. I'm convinced again, let me say it again. So you'll not misunderstand that a man ought to look like a man and act like a man and a woman ought to look like a woman. It's quite a difference in the two. Thank the Lord there is. Amen. <laughs> but now we come down to another verse. Matthew 5 verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Probably the most misunderstood scripture that I've, I've touched on today. The Lord said be perfect. The word perfect means complete. Y'all know of any perfect people around no you don't because the Lord said there is how many good none no not one but he meant we should be a complete I grew up with a fellow I went to school with for years his mother was a Pentecostal preacher, and he followed suit, and he became the pastor of the Pentecostal church over on the west side of Nagadoches. And I got to talking to him, and I, Paul, I said, fella, you can't be perfect. Oh, he said, you've got to be perfect. Well, he took the gun one day and finished his imperfect perfections off because he realized he could not reach that point of being perfect. Folks, if I thought I had to be perfect, you'd just about wipe me out myself. Because <laughs> the Lord said there is none good, no, not one. So you can interpret that scripture however you want, but he meant to be complete. One day we will be perfect because we won't have the flesh, right? The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Can't take his old body with you. That's why you need to take it and use it for the Lord today while you can because folks, it's going to be a, some millions of years past this life where you wished you had used it while you had it. You hear me? There's coming past this life millions of years, an eternity. Amen. There's no end. Well, you're going to wish that you had used what God gave you here for his honor and his glory. Trust me, folk, you didn't just accidentally happen. God put you here. And he allots all of us a certain amount of time on this. No, we don't know how long, do we? But we know as evidence around, mortality is still 100%, isn't it? Job was a doctor. Had a doctor's degree from the University of Life. And the Lord saw fit to tell us Job's story. And use that, if you will. Life was a great teacher to Job. God blessed him, and 
he was a rich man, had ten kids and everything you could wish for, and all of a sudden, one by one, God took it away from him. Miss Job said, Job, just go ahead and curse God and die. And he said, the Lord giveth, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Folk, he is the author of life. Both present tense and future tense. We're going to get to live with him forever because of what he did. He paid that sin debt that you and I were unable to pay. And God rewarded Job. And this week, if you will, look at the bottom of your page and see what Job said. First of all, he had asked the question, if a man die, shall he live again? And then he answers. Verse 25, For I know my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin, worms or maggots destroy this body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reign be consumed within me. He's going to be given a new body, one like Christ. That's what John said, brother, it doesn't appear yet what we shall be, but one thing we know, that when we shall see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. God's word, these 66 books, from Genesis to Revelations, is full of unsearchable riches that tell us the truth about life. Not fiction, folk. And one part does not differ from the other. Or one part's not contrary to the other. All 66 books must be taken together because they make up God's written word to us. Jesus is the Word. The Bible said in the beginning was the Word, right? And Jesus is the Word. But Job was a man that believed in God. He proved that with his life. And God blessed him and honored him and gives us record Job.